Greek or the Etruscan population. But I also have to say that the architecture of the vineyard, as we know nowadays, are date uh, medieval time. Chianti is a very small region. This region is bordered between Siena and Florence and counts 70,000 hectares, so quite small, in which we have 1,800 labels of uh, Chianti classical wine. Quite a lot eh, for such a small country. Let's say that the hills, the exposition to the sun and also the terrain makes uh, this product known in the world. That known that even the wine producer outside those 70,000 hectares start to produce wine with a very inferior quality of grape under the name of Chianti. What happened? During the 1932, to take out this injustice, the government established that the same product made in the homonymous area has to be called Chianti Classico, which means the original one. Quite easy to recognize it, because usually on the taste is better. It's a wine that can be aged even 10 years, and also the wallet is much more expensive, so that's a big alarm. And to make you realize you are buying the real one, stick on the bottle, you will see the black rooster, which was also the symbol of the military league during the medieval time. And it also became the symbol of peace between Siena and Florence. That's why we are keeping the tradition. This little animal is quite important, because it's the one that will make you realize you are buying the real one. But it's also the one that will make you realize that to produce a single bottle of Chianti, the wine producer has to follow many, many rules. And they have to follow it very strictly, that is the consortio. First of all, well, then I have to say that those rules change a little bit by the passing of the year, especially since we start to export a lot this wine to other nations. And this is one of it, because until the 2006, we were forced to use at least the 90% of Sangiovese grape. Usually, the other 10% used to be made with Canaiolo and Colorino, which are two different kinds of red berry, red grape, that are brewing spontaneously, like the Sangiovese here in Toscany. This is actually the way we are still producing it. Call class method classical, classic methods. Mm -hmm. Since the 2006, the government lowed down the percentage of Sangiovese to the 80%, and they allowed us, the wine producer, to set also the rest 20% in grape like Merlot, Chirin, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot, which are not really Italian. Anyway, this percentage never can be over to the 20%. And as I told you, in the case of our winery, we are still using grapes that are growing spontaneously here in Toscany. Then, during the harvest, we are allowed to pick only 3 kilos of Sangiovese per plant. What does it mean? The harvest has to be done by hand. It's two-thirds of the production. So you will lose, well, we don't lose it, but we don't use for the Chianti Classico one-third of the production. And the harvest has to be done by hand, because the people need to choose the best part of the Sangiovese grape. And this plant also needs to be aged at least five years before the first picking. You have to think that once you plant a grape, this is ready to be harvested right after two years two years and a half, so you have two and a half years of wasting of grain. That's also explain why it starts to be an expensive wine. <coughs> Said that, once we're done with the harvest and with the two fermentation, the Chiatti classical wine has to rest in this big Italian traditional barrel at least 12 months before the bottlement. Then, once you bottle it, you have to wait three months inside the bottle before you're able to sell it. In the case of our winery, the basic, the Chianti Classico Base, rests in the Italian barrel 18 months. When we talk about the reserva, 
Allora, I have to say that to produce the riserva we have to do two different kinds of choices. Because the first one is done during the harvest. Then the best part of these uh, three kilos are going to be destined to produce the riserva. And usually it's the 20 to 25 percent, more or less. The riserva has to lay out in barrel at least three years. That's what the government imposes you. In the case of our winery, rest four years. One of those three years need to go in the smallest barrel called Barrique. That is not an Italian production, but or American or French or Slovenian. Different kinds of forest, different kinds of feeding that the plants are getting from the grain, different kinds of final spices that the barrel will pass to the wine. Both of those for sure are, are made in wood. For the Italian traditional are made in a blend, in a mix sort of wood which is no burnt, is no toasted. And they can be used to produce wine 20 years, then they're going to be destroyed. And actually, we almost uh, are replacing all of them <coughs> from that one, those are new, but that one to over, they are going to be replaced in 10 days. So they are 20 years. For the barrique, those are made only in a hook, and the hook is burnt, is toast. They can be used to produce wine only for years. But then they are not going to be destroyed, those, because they can get ready to let the balsamic vinegar rest in it, even 20, 30, or 50 years. What can I say? We are not balsamic vinegar producer, and those are quite expensive. Because for each one, you can pay between the 15 up to 20 hundred euro. So what we do every four years, we are selling the, to the balsamic vinegar producer, and then we buy new barrel to let the wine rest. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. Yeah. Let's walk in the very old this little window, face the inside courtyard of the castle. And from those stairs, we used to go up to the tower of the castle. Mm. Anyway, I would like to show you this. They used to contain 7,200 liters of wine. It was a sort of a swimming pool. But it's not actually a nice one also. It's not on use anymore because that has 300 years old. Oh. And that is the one when the family decided to get into the wine business built right inside of the cellar because it was a sort of huge to be taken from outside. Two more things and then I promise I'll let you go to taste. Today you will have what represent to taste what represents this winery the most because you will start with the Chianti Classico 2011 to keep on going with the Chianti Classico Reserva 2005 to end well, with a super Toscan wine, which in the case it's a pure Cabernet Sauvignon. To all the American, in all the Australian, let me tell you, the Cabernet growing here is different totally from the one you used to, especially from the American one. Because <laughs> usually the Cabernet grape is something that you don't just drink, you eat it also. Mm -hmm. Get sticky up to your palate, filled up your mouth mm -hmm. pretty much. Over here, it's a very structurated wine with a lot of alcohol percentage, but you won't feel the cloudy, the sticky up to your palate. It's like cleans up your palate, much lighter. It has 14% of alcohol. You don't have to make the mistake that cleans up your palate is not a strong wine. It's a pretty structurated and body, but that is something lighter once you swallow it that has a plummy taste that will turn right away into a uh, herbaceous taste, a red bell pepper. And you will realize uh, the French oak in which this wine lay in between the 24 and the 30 months in a bad taste of uh, cinnamon. Anyway, 
you will start with the classical. To, to contain the classical, you will have a tray in which you have uh, slices of uh, sheep cheese, pecorino cheese. So I would suggest you to contain the classical with the pecorino. To keep on going with the Reserva wine, the Chianti Classico Reserva, you will see on the trail there's uh, different kinds of Toscan salami. The regular one aromatized with pepper and the finocchiona, which is aromatized with garlic and fennel. So to contain the Reserva, I suggest you the salami. And you will end with the Cabernet and the greasy bread. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of those three wines, you will have a taste of our traditional dessert wine named Binsanto, holy wine, just because it's the wine that usually priests are blessing during the Miss. To produce the Binsanto, we are using Trebbiano and Malvasia, which are sweet, <coughs> white berries that are growing spontaneously here in Tuscany. We are getting through the harvest very late, by the middle of October, because uh, this uh, grape needs to get a lot of sun that will give uh, the grape the sugar, the alcohol percentage, and also the sweet taste. Once we're done with the harvest, we are drying the grape until March, so we will produce a raisin. You have to think we will lose two-thirds of the production. In March, we're able to get in the process of the fermentation, and laying out in the traditional barrique name Caratello at least for five years. Oh. Oh, quite a lot. Yes. This wine has a very smooth taste, sweet, and thicker than the regular wine because uh, sure. has been produced by the raisin. And the raisin is actually the first impression that will come to your nose and also to your palate. But then this wine will take perfume of fresh fruit like the peach, the apricot, the yellow melon. <coughs> and on the back taste, almond, honey and orange. To contain the Vinsanto, there is a biscuit named Cantuccino di Prato. It's a dry biscuit made with the almond. The way we usually eat it is by dipping the cookie inside uh, the pizzato. can sound strange, but it's really good once you taste it. One more thing, then I promise I'll let you go. <laughs> At the end of your tasting, and I hope you will enjoy and you will appreciate, and you will be drunky drunky and drinky drinky, <laughs> I would like to show you our price list just in case. And of course, you are not obliged to buy anything, that's for sure. But I would be glad to say everything I can. <laughs> are you understand? Are you understanding? Yes. yes. Are you having any questions? No. Should we go up to drink? Yes. See. Si. Si. I can.